coming to the human rabies immunoglobulin that hrig so hrig is administered only once understand this at the earliest on zero day possibly the zero time at your visit or maximum within 24 hours and it is admit uh, at the beginning of anti rabies prophylaxis because even if you give him a vaccine it will take minimum 7 days for the vaccine to produce antibiotics to induce antibodies in the body right so this human uh, rabies uh, immunoglobulin should be administered in less than 7 days to provide immediate antibodies until the patient responds to rabies virus by producing antibodies a passive antibody titer is evident in 24 hours after giving your hrig so this is very significant within 24 hours the coverage starts Failure to administer HRIG lead to rabies despite appropriate post-exposure prophylaxis with human deployed cell vaccine. So, even if you are completely given the vaccine to the patient, all the full course of the vaccine, but you need to understand for the first seven days, there is no antibodies inside the body. Okay. So, that seven days is more than enough for rabies to spread inside the human body. It depends upon the viral load and the proximity to the CNS. Okay, so always better start with HRIG plus vaccine. And again, I'm just initiating this point again and again and again. If HRIG was not given on day zero, it can be given till day seven. Beyond day seven, the antibody response would have started. So there's no point in giving HRIG. HRIG is prepared from plasma of hyper immunized donors, usually screened for all the known viruses. So the viral communication, the other virus like HIV, hepatitis, virus transmission from because of HRIG is extremely low and it's not yet reported. Now you have that uh, HRIG, you need to inject near the wound. So your patient is coming with a big tear wound, maybe in the foot or the hand. Now you're going to inject this HRIG over the wound or near the wound itself. The idea being there will be the periphery nerves, okay, that is where at the site of inoculation is going to be the maximum load of rabies virus. Uh, it is that point where this rabies virus attaches itself to the nicotinic receptors. So, if you start giving antibodies at that point itself, you will be able to curtain out this uh, viral load. Okay. So, the CDCP, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, recommends that as much as possible, the full dose need to be infiltrated around the wound. Okay. And HRIG should not be used in the same syringe or same site as the vaccine because they will neutralize each other. Even if you are going to suture the wound, okay, you need to infiltrate it with HRIG on a day zero. Never think that this is going to add some uh, extra risk or it's going to contaminate and stuff. HRIG, by giving HRIG, you are not going to contaminate it further. Okay, So, even if the wound is getting sutured, you can infiltrate the local area with HRIG. So, I told you to infiltrate with the HRIG, 20 units per kg for body weight, right? But you need to understand you cannot create a compartment syndrome in that particular patient, right? If a patient comes with a small bite in the hand or the pulp, if you start infiltrating at the tip of the pulp, the pressure inside the pulp will rise, okay? It can lead to compartment pressure. It can lead to necrosis. So, when you're giving this kind of HRIG in a closed area where the compartment pressure is going to rise, be very careful, okay? And the remaining HRIG can be injected at a distant site from the vaccine administration. And remember, this HRIG has small amounts of IgA, has small amounts of IgA. So, in those patients who do not have IgA or in those patients, there is no antibody to IgA. If you start giving this uh, HRIG with this, which contains by default, small amount of IgA inside it. When you start administering HRIG to those patients with IgA deficiencies, body will recognize this few quantities of IgA as antigen and it will start creating antibodies against the IgA in your, in your vaccine, I mean, in your HRIG, okay? Your HRIG usually contains some amount of IgA. So, if you give this to patients who have IgA deficiencies, the body of the patient will think that this IgA is an antigen and it will start reacting against the antigen, okay? Now, coming to the clinical course. So, this consists of prodrome, then falling into acute, neurological phase, then coma and death when extremely rare that the patient can recover. So, prodromal symptoms are the first symptoms, the usual duration being around a week's time, 2 to 10 days. The patient can have headache, fever, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, some amount of anxiety, agitation, depression, pain or paralysis at the site of bite, all these things can be there. So, slowly this prodromal symptoms 
they they get merged over the neurological phase when does that neurological phase uh, begin at the first neurological sign this is some kind of overlap between the prodromal phase so the time limit is also 2 to 7 days patient will develop anxiety agitation depression hyperventilation hypoxia aphasia incoordination paralysis paralysis and hydrophobia pharyngeal spasm confusion delirium hallucination and marked hyperactivity also then slowly this patient switches towards coma that occurs in less than two weeks time and following coma hypotension hypoventilation apnea pituitary dysfunction cardiac arrhythmias cardiac arrest eventually happens and patient go for death okay for all there is a recovery it's going to take a lot of time okay other complications being a pneumothorax intravascular thrombosis secondary infections all these things can be there so this is the natural course of rabies so to be more specific that if at all there is a bite which is close to the cns like head uh, ear then the chance of that patient transmitting rabies or getting the sickness is going to be very very fast the incubation period is going to be very very less if it falls towards the head if there is a bite at the periphery or in the hand or at the foot region where which is the distal to the brain distal to the cns then the incubation period can be little longer okay so ultimately the rabies virus causes acute encephalitis in all warm blooded host humans and is almost fatal incubation period is 20 to 90 days can range from 4 days as long as to 6 years okay depends upon the bite is in the head or the bite is in the extremity okay so early in the course the limb pain limb weakness is present then the prodrome merges towards a neurological phase and they present in either the encephalitic form or in the paralytic form these are the two clinical forms the patient could present with okay encephalitic rabies is the hyper excitability disorientation basically the brain related thing or the cns related thing hallucination bizarre behavior and uh, this can be separated by lucid intervals so we may think the patient is improving in between right not only this that patient can have autonomic dysfunction also like hypersalivation hyperthermia tachycardia hypertension pillow erection cardiac arrhythmias and priapism coming to the paralytic rabies it begins with paralysis of the bitten extremity leading to quadriparesis bilateral facial weakness more likely a peripheral nervous system involvement and this can slowly progress towards coma and organ failure and once coma occurs then uh, fatality is going to be 100 percent this coma usually happens within 10 days of the onset of symptoms okay and regarding hydrophobia understand that the classic hydrophobia occurs in only up to 50 to 60 percentage of rabies patients it is not must that every rabies patient to have this okay that's a myth that every rabies patient will present with hydrophobia classic hydrophobia is usually present in only 50 percentage of patients uh, who have real rabies attempts to drink fluid result in severe spasm of the pharynx larynx and diaphragm this is called as hydrophobia right so now ultimately if the patient has occurred rabies then the patient is going to die for sure almost for sure 99 more than 19 percent mortality rate i can say you so death occurs due to variety of complication could be because of uh, pituitary dysfunction seizures respiratory dysfunction with progressive hypoxia cardiac dysfunction with uh, arrhythmias and cardiac arrest autonomic dysfunction renal failure and secondary bacterial infections you need to understand certain serious facts about is that till date only around 14 to 15 patients have known to survive rabies and among those survivors also they had severe neurological sequelae among these 14 patients except the three all the other had received the post exposure prophylaxis with a vaccine so it is not that they didn't receive vaccine these people also received vaccine that means out of 14 who is alive 11 patients received vaccine okay still they had rabies they had severe uh, neurological sequelae so this is the seriousness you have in front of you okay so next time you receive a patient or a candidate who has a risk to get a rabies then you need to perform number one is pre-exposure risk assessment okay then you need to identify your epidemiology in that particular area what type of animal is involved in rabies and is it rabies evident or prevalent in that particular area this was what you have to run in your mind okay and uh, 
once you do a pre-risk assessment then you need to provide a pre-exposure prophylaxis okay so then if at all they have post exposure stay they come to you after a bite or after inhalational uh, issues with the bad uh, bad uh, inhalation stuff then you need to evaluate whether that particular zoonotic animal can be captured or not captured what type of animal and follow that particular algorithm okay then how to give the vaccine when to give the vaccine what is the schedule when to give hrig how to give hrig how to anatomical site of HRIG, all these things are important, okay. Now, coming to the proper diagnosis and treatment. Rabies should be included in the differential diagnosis of any patient who is coming with unexplained, acute, rapidly progressive encephalitis, okay. So, we do uh, brain imaging, then following which if required, we do CSF analysis and we send that sample for uh, ME panel, that's a meningoencephalitis panel. Always do think of even rabies virus, okay. Uh, you the uh, bite history may not be that evident in most of the patients right because the incubation period can be very long they would have even forgotten it okay so unless it's a dog bite people never take other bites very seriously also and understand most of the exposure to rabies through bat are actually neglected even the patient themselves will not know it right so be very cautious when you are uh, evaluating a patient who have unexplained acute rapidly progressing encephalitis especially in the presence of anatomical or autonomic instability dysphagia hydrophobia paresis and parasitosis okay the differential diagnosis of rabies being tetanus poliomyelitis guillain barre syndrome botulism transverse myelitis post vaccinal encephalomyelitis intracranial mass lesions cerebrovascular accidents poisoning with atropine like compounds you need to know there are other rare differential diagnosis also i have just put this slide for you to uh, listen to this uh, uh, weird names okay even i have not uh, heard these names in my career but uh, possibly in near future where the globalization is more common the travel to various area trekking is more common slowly we'll start hearing about nipah virus Slowly, we will start hearing about Hendra virus and Toscana virus. All these things, eventually, we will start uh, hearing these terminologies, okay. So, Japanese encephalitis, enterovirus, human herpes virus 6 and West Nile viruses. All these can be a differential diagnosis for rabies. So, now, having said there are a lot of differential diagnosis, the major clue is the animal bite or bat exposure. So, get a very good history about where they went did they go for caving is there any chance that they could have got exposed to bats and stuff and development of pathognomonic signs of hydrophobia or aerophobia is very typical of uh, rabies what is aerophobia precipitating grimacing and other signs like blowing air on the patient face is more than enough okay it's called aerophobia so understand that we are left with no option at all during the incubation period no diagnostic test is available for either the animals or the humans to identify whether they are infected or not okay once symptoms become evident we already lost the train right only we can give only symptomatic management in them okay but to confirm the diagnosis for the benefit of the community we need to check for the detection of antigen in biopsy from the highly innervated skin like a nuchal skin or detection of antibody in serum if unvaccinated because if the patient is vaccinated obviously the antibodies will be present in unvaccinated direction of serum antibody or in the csf antibody can confirm that the patient has been exposed to rabies isolation of virus from the saliva or isolation of nucleotide sequences in saliva skin and other tissue can tell that the patient is infected serum antibodies may be present as early as day five of clinical illness understand that okay uh, usually in the patient presence with encephalitis or altered sensorium, we do CT brain that's majorly to exclude other diagnosis. Okay, CT will not show any classical findings of rabies encephalitis. MR brain also will not show major changes, but if at all it shows, it can show some lesions in the gray matter area of the brain parenchyma, including some in the brain stem. CSF will show mild monomorphic uh, leucocytosis, so always do check for rabies if there is a doubt. Understand there is no specific therapy till date for clinical rabies, okay, only supportive management. 
treatment with rabies vaccine, rabies immunoglobulins, IV, ribavirin or interferon, all these things is not effective once rabies is very clinically evident in that particular candidate. In animal models, understand use of corticosteroids shortens the incubation period, worsens the mortality, kills the patient almost instantaneously. So, steroids are contraindicated in rabies, okay. In certain encephalitis, in certain meningitis, we give steroids, right. But in rabies, steroids are contraindicated, very, very important point, very important point. So, this was a very famous protocol, it's called as a Milwaukee's protocol. That is a survival with normal neurological function was reported in a 15 year old girl in whom basically the brain was arrested. That means a coma was induced with ketamine, midazolam, ribavirin, amantadine and stuff. So, this was very enthusiastic for others also to conduct similar protocols. But however, similar regimen have been used for more than 30 other patients without any success. If you get time to go through this particular uh, case report, you can see that this is a very young girl, 15 young girl, 15 years old uh, young girl and it was actually a bat exposure, right. So, it was a bat exposure. We do not know what uh, viral load exactly the patient had and uh, and it was only maybe, uh, it was only very minimal. She was identified at the very earlier time. So, possibly we do not know if this is a mutated uh, uh, rabies virus, we really don't know all this stuff, right? But somehow, resting her brain and giving some antivirals were actually helped her to come out of this kind of deadly diseases. But when we repeated this regimen, we were not able to save much of other patients. But having said all these things, nowadays, the critical care unit has developed very well. So, give maximum supportive type of treatment with to whichever organ dysfunction has occurred. So, slowly, you'll be able to bring out of this patient slowly once the antibodies levels rises in their body, let us hope whether the patient improves or not. But till date, there is no confirmed treatment or till date, there is no confirmed protocol to treat a rabies patient. So, take home message is that, so rabies is a very, very deadly fatal disease and first thing is to protect yourself. Do not go to this kind of endangered areas and if at all your uh, internet to go there, take all preventive measures and if you are being bitten or exposed to the kind of rabies situations, the source of rabies viruses, then take adequate precautionary measures, go to the doctor and get yourself checked and uh, help them in the diagnosis also and understand this kind of diagnosis is made not only for the patient but on a large it is for the community so that you can identify that particular vector and arrest the spread of this deadly virus in the society, okay. So, early management is actually for the benefit of the society, less likely for the patient because rabies is completely fatal, okay. So, uh, uh, this class is on rabies, not about the dog. So, this puppy says I am not rabies, just a puppy, okay. Thank you so much.